All right, welcome back, guys. Let's go ahead and continue with our last video where we left off after installing this cool little browser terminal that we're able to access our Linux box with right inside our browser. Uh, and what we're going to do now is create a reverse proxy using Engine X to access it through that instead of having to access it directly at the port in this, you know, semi-long URL. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started with that. Basically, I uh, got the docs up here for Nginx. It's a pretty simple, pretty simple thing to execute. We just need a location block in our config file. So we'll do that. Nano, etc, Nginx, sites enabled, default. We're going to go down just below our PHP location block here. We're just going to put it right at the shell. Just want a simple shell. All right, proxy pass. HTTP colon slash slash local host colon two 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 slash SSH slash host slash one two seven dot oh dot oh dot one. All right, control X, yes, enter to save. Let's go ahead and pop this open on our Nginx. <coughs> oh, come on. What is going on here? Learn to type. Shell. Not found. Oh, duh. Got to remember to restart the server. System control, restart, Nginx. Okay, so at least went black that time, but let's see what's going on. We've got some errors. Let's look at our network tab. There's some resources not being loaded. Okay, so there are resources being accessed at this root uh, URL here, front slash SSH. So let's set up reverse proxy to handle that go back into our config file and let's proxy the location slash ssh proxy pass http colon slash slash local host colon 2222 slash SSH. Yeah, I think that should work. Let's see what happens. Refresh. And I did, oh, duh. Got to remember to restart. Okay, try again. Okay, cool. This is working. Uh, you'll notice pretty quickly here that uh, the socket.io is working. Um, when it tries to upgrade though, you'll look at this request for the actual web sockets and it's not quite getting there. It's, it's actually, provisional headers are shown. Oh, auth. Uh, yeah, so the web sockets, I'm pretty sure they're not working there. So I believe, you know, as we type here, you can see it's doing this long pulling. Um, so let's go ahead and show you guys how to get the reverse proxy to actually forward that WebSocket so that the socket IO does not have to fall back on the long pulling. And just a quick Google for Nginx reverse proxy WebSockets. Come on, clicky click. Scroll down here to get to the goodies, and it's this block right here. You'll see they've got their proxy pass and these options right here. And that is exactly what we need. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. Bring it into our SSH. And the reason we're bringing it in there, because if you look at the transport, it is using that URL, the slash SSH. So we want to put this inside of here. And we will paste, clean this up a little bit. 
No, come on. All right. Control X, yes, enter. Let's hit refresh on this. Pulling WebSocket air. Oh, hold on. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. Guys, it's been a long day. I got to remember to restart this thing. And sometimes you actually have to refresh this twice anyway. That's why that failed. Uh, but both needed to happen. <laughs> okay. It looks like da 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 da. 101 switching protocols. It is now using WebSockets. So as we type in here, we do ls and cd slash and ls that, we can look at our file system. We're not getting any extra requests to the web server through the long pulling method because web sockets are in fact working. Awesome guys, that's how you do it. That's how you set up a reverse proxy with Nginx, including how to configure that reverse proxy to work with WebSockets. All right, guys, catch you later.